Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you about how I transformed a traditional looking recreation map into an antique style map. I'll be using America's newest national park, the New River Gorge National Park and Preserve in West Virginia, as the map area. But these techniques can be applied to any map of any area, so let's dive in. This is a lightning talk, and I'm taking that format very seriously. So as a kid watching a Midwest lightning storm at night, it was really fascinating to see a pitch black landscape that suddenly illuminated as if it were daytime for a fraction of a second. This talk is very that. You will hear broad strokes that hopefully spark a vision for at least one of you to transform one of your beautiful maps into a completely different style. So there are no step-by-steps, -step, but rather I'm gonna talk about four brief points that you and your creative style can improvise upon if you choose. My name is Sarah Bell. I'm a cartographer and a database designer, and I also now call myself a typeface maker. Fonts, colors, elements, and textures. These are the four characteristics of a map that I'm focusing on to transform a well-designed map into a completely different, but still well-designed map. I'm gonna revisit that opening slide. Maybe you get the feeling that you're looking at a poster or a magazine ad from the 1980s. I tried to accomplish this by using some common elements, fonts, colors, elements, and textures that make me think of these old ads and posters. So the first one, fonts and typefaces. The title of this slide is in Cooper font, and although the typeface was released in 1922, Cooper was very popular during the 1960s through the 1980s. It was very popular in the 70s and 80s. It can potentially make people feel a little nostalgic for the 1980s, or perhaps the magazine collection in their parents' attic. Number two, hues. A lot of magazine ads from the 1980s have this golden brownish hue to them, so that explains the color choice here. And three, some of you might have even started reading this paragraph text, which was also sort of an element I noticed when looking at magazine ads of the 1980s. This sometimes informative text has been in magazine ads for a while and still occurs today. This type of text almost seems as a design element to fill the spaces of the ad. So in this 1987 Panasonic cordless phone ad, Notice that the text fills the area nicely, but you don't have to read the text in order to know what this ad wants you to know. Panasonic has a cordless phone that fits in your shirt pocket. I know that this giant text in the ad might make you think you want to read that smaller text, but I read it. It all is really about a cordless telephone that fits in your shirt pocket. So to make my slide feel a little more ad-like, I included that paragraph text as a nod to magazine ad design in general. And that's really the only purpose that that text serves. And number four, texture. Magazine ads from the 1980s are on paper that is decades old. As the paper wears, there's this like worn out sheen on the magazine paper, at least how I see it. So I added a little paper sheen in Photoshop, which you may or may not be able to detect in this presentation. And speaking of combining your inspiration and experience of previous design with your own personal unique style to come up with something completely new, let's talk about fonts. The design of Netflix's Stranger Things, created by the Duffer Brothers, is informed by elements of movies and television, mostly from the 1980s, creating something wonderfully nostalgic, yet completely new and contemporary. The very first thing that Stranger Things' viewers see when they watch an episode is the introduction, which is quite literally just the red outlined letters of the series title rolling into place character by character over a black background while the show's theme song by Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein plays. The introduction uses the same font that you see in this slide, Bengat Pro ITC Bold, which was created by Ed Bengat in 1979. A variation of this typeface graces the cover of many horror fiction books of the 1980s, including several Stephen King novels. By choosing Bengat as the typeface, Stranger Things' viewers are already brought into the 1980s horror era before the opening scene even starts. This is the power of well-selected typefaces. But we're here to talk about maps. By the way, maps spelled backwards is spam. 
and the Spam logo uses ITC souvenir font, which was designed in 1914 by Morris Fuller Benton, but then later redesigned in the 1970s by none other than Ed Bengat. It is this Bengat version that we see on the Hormel product. And if I had used any other font here, you would probably be thinking of junk email instead of canned ham. Again, this illustrates the emotions that fonts can conjure. So for real maps now. By the way, the maps that I made in this talk were all made with ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud using ArcGIS Pro's new AIX file format. This link I'm showing here provides a quick demo of that map making workflow if you want to try it out. The New River Gorge National Park and Preserve in West Virginia is one of America's newest national parks. It's also a wonderful rock climbing area. So I thought, what better way to celebrate this new national park than to make a map? On the left side, you see the New River Gorge map, and on the right side, you see a zoomed in portion of that map. Throughout this map, I used fonts from only two typefaces, Futura and 20th Century. So Futura is very popular, and 20th Century is also one that I love um, for the same reasons I love Futura. Both were inspired by Bauhaus design, but 20th Century was developed a bit later than Futura, which was designed in 1927. The reason I like these intentionally minimalist typefaces for a national park map is because they remind me of pamphlets and brochures from the 1930s New Deal era, which is an era when the National Park Service was being expanded. And so for that reason, these fonts seem fitting to me for this map. The predominant hue is this warm peachy feel, and the areas of focus, I used cooler hues just to strike a nice contrast. This map has general overview information to acquaint you with the area, so I included this locator map to show where in West Virginia the New River Gorge is. I used a simple map title since at the moment the map is one-sided because oftentimes recreation maps like this will be folded and the title is on a front fold and not necessarily part of the map. So I kept the title very simple. I aligned the border of the land management areas to the inside, which is also a common way to design recreation maps that have a lot of federal and state park and recreation land on it. I have some icon point symbology as well, and there's a lot of room for more point symbology that I might include at a later time. I'm a former National Park Service park ranger, and I handed out this brochure map on the right to park visitors at the North Cascades National Park in the Visitor Center. And I got very accustomed to reading this map upside down as I would show visitors good hiking spots. The texture for my new River Gorge map was heavily informed by this brochure map and other maps like it, where I think the hillshade looks very glossy or shiny. So now that we covered fonts, hues, elements, and textures for this New River Gorge map, let's see how making some adjustments to those characteristics can turn this map into an antique looking map. I had a clear idea of the style I was going for. Mid 1800s to early 1900s maps have these wonderfully flourishing titles that use a majuscule engraved font. So my very first quest was to seek out a font that could help me create a title like this. Luckily, in 2017, Sabina Chapara created the Rosella typeface, and it worked perfectly for my purposes. These old map titles also tend to mix a bunch of different flourishing fonts in a plethora of subtitling. So for that, I found Chanson Demore Regular to work appropriately. The other two fonts that I included in this map area are Bell MT for town and land management areas and Bell Topo Sands for the hydro and topography. Bell Topo Sands is a font that I designed specifically for the purpose of these kinds of maps, and you can download it for free at cerebellmaps.com. Old maps like these, the ones I was inspired by, have a yellowish brownish tone, oftentimes due to the way that cellulose ages, so the paper turns yellow as it ages. Going with this overall tone obviously seemed like a clear choice. A lot of the ink for roads and labels appear black on these older maps, so I did that. And also, old maps like these often have a vibrant color for their land areas. Surprisingly so. And furthermore, these polygons that have this vibrant color are commonly more vibrant towards the edges of the polygons. So, inspired by these bright greens, yellows, and pinks, that is how I symbolize the land management polygons on this map. I chose a blackish hue for almost all other data and labels on this map. We already talked about the flourishing and large titles of these antique maps. I included one on mine, including the phrase map of in the title, which was super common for the period. I found many old maps of this era 
using an alphanumeric grid like this, so I added one on the map using the Rosella font. Another elemental characteristic of some of the maps of this era is a thin amount of labels or data in large swaths of the map. I did not remove too many labels of the map or data from this version of the map because you may recall that the original version, the recreation style version, it had room for more data, but for this version, I felt that it struck the right chord. And finally, for this map's texture, I aged the hill shade a bit in Photoshop by upping the contrast, and while in Photoshop, I decided to add a folded paper texture with a multiply mask. So here's one more look at my original New River Gorge recreation style map. And here is the new antique map inspired version that I transformed it into by focusing on the fonts, hues, elements, and textures. So you might be asking yourself why anyone would want to take the time to do this. I can only speak from my experience. When you're doing cartography, you have to start from a point of inspiration. It could be as simple as making your water blue and your borderlines dashed because those are common, well understood symbologies. For me, cartographic inspiration has evolved into incorporating my own interpretation of art and design periods into the maps that I'm making. Ultimately for me, this exercise develops the design muscle and helps evolve a mapper's personal unique style. It also helps inform decision-making in the cartographic process. Thank you everyone for coming to my talk today. I'll be available for discussion in the chat area. Thank you.